When Star Wars Rebels Season 1 came to a close, Ezra and the others made it out alive against the evil Inquisitors hired by the Empire, but in Season 2, the Dark Lord of the Sith, Darth Vader, has been tasked with finding the Rebels and putting a stop to them once and for all. And on this video, I will give you my thoughts on Star Wars Rebels Season 2. If you have yet to see my review for Star Wars Rebels Season 1, I'm going to leave a link to that down in the description, but let's talk about Season 2 of Star Wars Rebels. Season 2 had a lot going for it in that there were more episodes which allowed the writing team to further expound upon these characters, further let us get to know these characters, and also bring in some characters from not just the Star Wars films, but also the Clone War, and they definitely did that from the beginning with the season premiere. The Siege of Lothal episode I thought was very well done because they established not only Vader as being a much more serious threat than the Inquisitor from Season 1, but also we brought back Ahsoka Tano, who was Anakin Skywalker's apprentice in the Clone War, and there's a really incredible epic scene where Ahsoka, using the Force, discovered the horrible truth of the fate of her former master, which would actually wind up being a very interesting story arc that would continue throughout the season, building up to the big finale, where she actually would go one-on-one -on -one with Darth Vader, and many revelations and shocking surprises were had by all. Then the series would continue with the next episode, The Lost Commanders, where the team would run into the former clone trooper Rex, whom you may remember from the Clone War TV show, who is now semi-retired but gets pulled back into the fight due to his dislike of the Empire and, of course, his love of the Rebellion. Now, this episode, I think, did a fantastic job for a lot of people who may have thought that the prequel films made the clones all, like, lifeless, kind of soulless characters. And even though the Clone War series did do a really good job of showing us that these clones were all individuals, I felt it was even more powerful here at Rebels because the time frame of Rebels is after the clones have already been decommissioned and already have outlived their usage. So now we get a, a view of the clones after the war and how the clones that survived deal with what they've done or what they didn't do during the Clone War and the ultimate betrayal of the Jedi, which leads to a really great subplot between Kanan and Rex. Very interesting story in that Kanan hates clones. He's coming in with somewhat of a prejudice towards clones because he knows that the clones were instrumental in the genocide of the Jedi, including his own master, which results in Kanan not trusting Rex, even though Rex and a few other clones remove their Order 66 brain chips, which is what caused them to destroy the Jedi, as was established in the final season of Clone Wars way back when. And the writing here was so great because they essentially established a multi-episode story arc here with Kanan not trusting the clones, which would pay off in the episode Stealth Strike, where Kanan actually makes a choice to rescue Rex and save his life, putting aside his bias to save the life of a friend. Now, I felt this was great writing, and it's kind of repeated later on in the series with the Honorable Ones episode where Agent Callus and Zeb are essentially forced to work together to get out of a situation and they have to put aside their biases. It's still good writing, even though in some ways it carries the same story beats, but one thing I did notice about Season 2 is that they definitely tried to make the other members of the Ghost more relevant. With Season 1, the story of Kanan and the story of Ezra was really the most interesting stuff, and in this season they really tried to give Zeb a lot of backstory, a lot of history, and the same thing goes for Sabine and Hera, but to me they didn't really click as well as I wanted them to. Zeb's development I thought was really good, but I still don't really care about Sabine and Hera. In fact, to me, this whole season, the highlights of it, as far as the overall season goes, is the plight of Jedi Master Ahsoka. And every episode that she's in, every story arc she's in, to me was really interesting and very engaging, and naturally, of course, that's going to lead to more interesting stories for Ezra and Kanan, who are the two Jedi that also are involved in this whole thing. Now, obviously, Vader's not going to be the main villain of the season. Even though he is the main villain, he's not going to be the one we see week to week. So, of course, we have, what do you expect, new Inquisitors, one of which being voiced by Sarah Michelle Gellar, which I thought was pretty damn interesting. Namely, because her husband, Freddie Prince Jr., voices Kanan, 
a guy who she ends up dueling with a few times in this season. So there were a lot of good moments, but to be perfectly honest, I felt that even though they added more episodes to the season, as a result of that, they also added a lot more filler. I thought that the season dragged on quite a bit. There are some episodes that I thought were just not very entertaining. They weren't terrible or anything, but you could just tell they were kind of fillerish and that nothing really important happened. So I understand that they added more episodes to give some of the other characters more time to shine and to explain more of a backstory. But honestly, I did not think they used their time very wisely. Episodes like The Forgotten Droid just kind of put me to sleep. I thought Blood Sisters was also not very good. Now, the big thing about Season 2 is that Ezra actually discovers the fate of his parents, which I thought was really good and wasn't even in the finale. It was actually in the middle of the season in the episode entitled Legacy where he finds out what happened to his parents, the unfortunate fate of his parents, which is very well written because it's teasing something that's going to end up playing a role, I believe, in Season 3 of Rebels as well as maybe even later in Season 2 with the finale as far as the connection that Ezra had with his parents, the anger that he felt when he found out his parents were dead, which is seemingly going to lead to a quest that is fueled by revenge, and anybody who knows about Star Wars knows that anger and revenge are the path to the dark side, and they really do tease quite a bit that Ezra may at some point either jump to the dark side or at least be heavily seduced into going. And really, the lore between the Jedi and the Sith, to me, is the best part of Star Wars Rebels. The best episodes are about finding out more about the Force, the Jedi, and the Sith. And the big road to the finale actually begins with one of these episodes called The Shroud of Darkness, which is where Kanan officially gets the rank of Jedi Knight, and Ezra communicates with Master Yoda and is told to go to Malachor, which is going to be paid off in the season finale, the two-part season finale, Twilight of the Apprentice, which had everybody talking. This was a fantastic two-part episode and honestly better, I think better than the season one finale. And the season one finale was great, but this one was unbelievably epic, almost movie-like. Asuka, Ezra, Kanan, and Chopper show up on Malachor, the Sith world, in search of some mysteries in a Sith temple, but of course the Inquisitors weren't far behind. This of course would lead to the crew getting split up and Ezra encountering somebody else in that temple, Star Wars fan favorite, the former Darth Maul. And this episode was so entertaining because they really are teasing the balance between light and dark. As Darth Maul starts to teach Ezra that anger can actually be a very powerful weapon with the dark side, which goes directly against the teachings of Kanan. So here we have a situation where, much like Anakin, we have Ezra struggling to kind of find himself, struggling to balance his own self with the Force, and having two different sides pull him in two different directions. Darth Maul, the dark side, the easy path, is pulling him one way, but being a Jedi and being peaceful and understanding and being focused is Kanan the other way. But what I loved about it is that Maul isn't really a villain. Maul's kind of an anti-hero. Those of you who saw Clone War, you know that Maul has no love lost for Emperor Palpatine and seeks revenge. So Maul's character will be very interesting to look at in upcoming seasons because I like the fact that He's a dark side user, he still has his Sith powers, he still taps into his hatred and his anger, but he's not a villain necessarily, he just wants revenge for what Sidious did to his brother, and that kind of makes sense. I mean, wouldn't you? And we find out also that Maul sees a lot of potential in Ezra and wants to make him his apprentice. So I think this will be covered in Season 3. Of course, the episode ends up having a huge climax where we find out that the temple is actually a giant super weapon powered by a Sith Holocron. And this would lead to a couple of different duels where Maul's helping out our heroes and then betrays them to try to get the machine activated. But this would lead to a big final conflict between... Ahsoka and Darth Vader, the former Anakin Skywalker, having this great epic duel, which I thought was incredible. There were explosions everywhere. The ship is just, everything's just going nuts. And we're left with a little bit of a semi-cliffhanger ending. As of right now, we don't know where Ahsoka, Maul, or Vader are going to end up. Ezra has the Sith Holocron. He finally opens it to cliffhanger the season. And that's where we're at right now. So... 
Season 2 of Star Wars Rebels I thought was really fun to watch, but there's a lot of filler in the middle, and I don't know if I'm going to go back and watch these episodes again with the exception of maybe, I would say, four or five of them. There just was way too much padding, I felt. I think that they should try to make these seasons shorter, maybe 12, 13 episodes, and really pack what they can into them, because in my opinion, the side stories I felt distracted too much from the interesting stuff, and again, it's just one man's opinion, but... The Ahsoka and the Jedi and Sith lore is the main hook of this show. Other stuff is just kind of okay to me. But I will say, much like season one, it's bookended with a great season premiere and a great season finale. And I can't wait for season three. Thanks for watching the video. Let me know what you think of Rebel season two. And may the force be with you as we begin season three very soon.